Howdy guys, Rex here. Today we're going to talk about the 10 most common long range rifle um, mistakes that folks make. And this is based on years of observation, not only hanging out uh, with lots of other folks, but also my own misinterpretations of reality uh, that I have learned and corrected over the years. So uh, we're going to share a little bit here and hopefully uh, get you on the right path. Number 10. Muzzle velocity is a constant. Never assume that that's the case. In fact, it very rarely is the case. Nothing in the universe is really a constant, okay? Uh, your muzzle velocity is going to be continuously changing throughout the life of your bore and also through the different ammunition temperatures uh, that you might be experiencing out there in the bush in real life. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen with internal ballistics and chemistry and propellants and powders and a different, uh, you know, uh, as your bore changes over time due to different levels of uh, dirtiness or, uh, you know, the dimensional changes, the, the thermal and the mechanical erosion mechanisms that will experience, your muzzle velocity will continuously be changing. So muzzle velocity is something you can't get off the box of ammunition. You can't look in the reloading manual and say, hey, this is my uh, velocity because that's what the number is for how much powder I put in with this bullet. That's not how that deal works. It'll continuously vary even within the same exact rifle and the same exact ammunition. So that is something you have to log if you want to have real good first shot long range success. Okay, uh, number nine, thinking that your rifle is zeroed. Okay, that's often not the case either. A lot of times your rifle might be zeroed for one particular application and that application might not be what you're intending to use the rifle for. Uh, for example, a lot of guys might tune the rifle in on a lead sled at the range on a bench and then they'll take that rifle out uh, mountain sheep hunting. Uh, the, the firing position will have a tremendous effect on your point of impact with that rifle. How exactly how you're holding on to it, what your, what your support is, what you're leaning on, how you're managing that system will change your point of impact. So you need to zero your rifle as you intend to use it in the field. We talk about that at the RX seminar and we show you how to do that at the RX 100 and the 1000 classes in great detail. We concentrate a lot of time on that, okay? Number eight, dogma. There's a lot of guys with real hardcore ideas on exactly how you need to manage your rifle because that's how so-and-so does it, that's how so-and-so teaches it. Uh, there are certain fundamentals of marksmanship that have to be executed in order to hit the target. However, there's infinite variations of technique that you need to use in different circumstances, okay? And a lot of people are superimposing their rigid marksmanship dogmas into the wrong application, okay? The way an F-class guy handles a rifle is going to be tremendously different from how a PRS shooter handles it uh, is going to be very different from how a field guy is going to shoot it right in tactical applications because there's different pressures on priorities on what needs to happen in your firing position so you can't have rigid dogmas you have to be open-minded there's different biology types there's different kinds of shooters uh, people have different anatomy in their necks there's a whole slew of things that will change exactly how you're managing that system so if someone tells you there's only one one way to grip the rifle, to hold the rifle, to get into the shoulder. There's only one way to preload or not preload, uh, bipod or, or to utilize a certain position. They are coming at you from a, a very, very narrow angle from the skill set that they are used to shooting in, which is not wrong in their exact set of circumstances for their body and what they're trying to achieve necessarily. And now it might be wrong, <laughs> but there's a lot more going on than that. So a lot of times if you hear someone being very dogmatic on exactly how a shooting position needs to be executed without asking a lot of questions or trying to figure out what the point of the deal is, they might not have experience in that other field, okay? And so um, being dogmatic in general, is something that is indicative of maybe inexperience in other fields, okay? Number seven, if you are continuously truing your muzzle velocity, okay, but before each match, um, there's a lot to learn about the ballistic computers, okay? Most of those muzzle velocity truing features were created for folks that don't really want to read the instruction manual or don't have time to do that. And so there's way, way better ways of managing your equipment to put the proper inputs in that'll give you the true answer every time. 
if your ballistic computation device is working properly and you have the proper inputs in it, okay, and there's not something screwy going on, it's kind of a you set it once kind of deal. And it should be good for match to match without truing your velocity. Truing your velocity was created even if you have to ask the guys who invented these different programs. They'll admit that, yeah, we kind of had to invent that because it's too complex for guys to understand all the inputs and how to actually properly uh, measure those things and get them in there properly in, in the right order. It's, it's really a matter of uh, making a field laboratory, okay? So if you're having to continuously true your muzzle velocity, there's still a lot yet to learn. Hopefully in that device, most devices now are evolving rapidly. Uh, there's a lot better ones available now than there used to be even a couple years ago. And so uh, that's something that maybe a guy should explore in more detail. And that's something we also try to help you through in the classes. Uh, there's new stuff that comes out every seven minutes. So whatever, I mean, I could give you advice right now, but you know, each device and each generation of software that comes out has a better way of doing that, okay? Uh, so if you're continuously training your velocities, um, there's a lot more depth to that and there's a way better way to skin that cat, okay? Number six, thinking that your ballistic tool, whatever that might be, is giving you the correct ambient air temperatures or the correct wind readings downrange, okay guys? Now, if you have a Kestrel, for example, and you pull it out of your pocket and you hit the button to turn it on and you get your temperature, you are probably reading the temperature of the inside of your pocket. <laughs> it takes a little while for these instruments to reach ambient air temperature. It may be getting the temperature of that instrument as it is sitting in the sunlight. There's a lot of things to, man, uh, to uh, learn in terms of managing your ballistic tools and your meteorological equipment, okay? You almost have to be a little bit of a meteorologist and a scientist when you're doing these things because those tools are calibrated to be within one degree of accuracy. They're very accurate, but you have to manage it properly. Likewise, you might see on the range, if a dude's got his anemometer set up, right? And you have that in your ballistic uh, Kestrel, you know, uh, computation device here, and you're taking a wind reading at your position and then basing your firing solution on that, that's another deal that might not be correct. That's the only spot where that bullet is not flying. That's at you. The bullet starts at the muzzle and then it's flying way out there. So that's where you need to be concerned with. Plus, a lot of guys won't notice that they're like protected by this giant huge thing called like the range roof or the porch or a giant building behind them or they're shooting from cover or they're shooting from behind some trees and you're getting a very, very erroneous reading uh, in terms of what's going on downrange. You're, you're getting a really good assessment of what's going on right here, but you're not concerned with what's going on downrange. At the classes, we show you how to properly read the wind and use the anemometer to its best effect. And there's certain ways, even just how you hold it around your body if there's a wind coming, will change it quite a bit. Very interesting, okay? Another thing it, that a lot of folks misunderstand is, and this is number five, is the empirical results don't always match your ballistic modeling, okay? There's a lot more going on than meets the eye. These ballistic models are very good sometimes, but they're based on certain methods and materials that were created uh, to carry out the test that that model was based on. And your rifle, in the way that it, you know, the internal ballistic variations put a little bit of a, you know, they asymmetrically swedge the bullet or there's some kind of weird thing going on in the internal ballistics of your rifle, that's going to throw you off a little bit. And you'll see that, especially when you start, uh, start shooting at extreme long ranges, okay? So never assume that your ballistic model is automatically correct. You're going to probably have to um, mess with it a little bit to get that model to match your empirical reality, which you see. Very, very common mistake. That's why a lot of these guys, when they type in the numbers, it's a very good program. They got the inputs even sometimes correct, as far as they know, but they shoot and the bullet does not land where it's supposed to. <laughs> That's because there's a lot more going on than, than meets the eye. It's uh, A lot of it's about inputs, but even there, the math can never I perfectly model what's going on at the moment in time when you're about to shoot, okay? Number four is a misconception that your dope, your data upon previous engagement, right? Or your load, uh, your special loads will work for somebody else. Each different rifle, even with the identical ammunition, I can have a whole bunch of 
uh, rounds that were loaded, just exactly identical, same batch, same lot, everything, okay? And we can have two of the same exact rifles and you will have different results, okay? Your, your drop might be different and your uh, performance, your accuracy performance might be different. Your, your point of impact might shift at different times. You might not be in the node on that other rifle. There's too many internal ballistic variations going on to make that assumption. So your, your dope, your elevation uh, that you got in that exact rifle might be close to someone else's, even if it's the same make and model and ammo, but it's never gonna be exactly the same, okay? If you really zoom in, um, you know, once in a while you might get kind of lucky and it might be pretty darn close, too close to even know a difference. But uh, that's a major assumption that you never want to take, okay? All right, so that brings us to item number three, trusting your laser. Now, lasers are very, very accurate, high-tech tools. However, um, there is every bit as much of a, a procedure in knowing how to run that thing as there is to, to aim the rifle. You have to have laser marksmanship to actually get that laser to hit that target that you are actually aiming at in order to get the true range. It's very common in a lot of the courses we do. We'll uh, have a lot of guys on the line, all with very good lasers. They're accurate to within plus or minus one meter, and you'll have quite a variety of different distances. Now, if you survey those points ahead of time with the surveying equipment, you'll know, you'll You'll determine that range or if you use GPS there's a lot of ways where you can get a better determination rather than an estimation that laser could be bouncing off of anything you might have missed off the side over the top underneath or hit a stick or there are atmospheric conditions uh, the beam might have been bent in the atmosphere because of thermal differential it can actually deflect uh, exactly where that laser you think is going might not be the same as your aiming point okay and so there's different tricks to running lasers to get them to work better but just trusting your laser is not you don't want to base any kind of your dope or your ballistic corrections or if you're investing a lot of uh, energy into truing your tables or truing your ballistic device and spending a lot of money on ammo and a lot of time going out there you have to determine the range to your target. And you can't really do that with a laser alone. Uh, there are some ways that are a lot better. And we talk about how to run a laser better if you come to the courses, of course. But uh, that's one big mistake that a guy sees a lot is a guy will just pop a laser out, shoot it, get a number. If it shoots you a number back, then they go off that and they might be 200 meters off because their marksmanship on their laser was a little bit off, okay? Uh, number two. Magical equipment, okay? There is like no magical equipment that's gonna help you to be an awesome long range shooter out, out of the gates, okay? There's no rifle, there's no optic, there's no ammunition, there's no software, and there's no peripheral equipment that's gonna add up and make you a good long range shooter, okay? And a very, very simple concept to prove. So let's take like Jimi Hendrix's Fender Stratocaster, okay? And hand it to some random kid on the street and ask him to play a little wing. It might kind of suck. It might not be very good. <laughs> it's a decent guitar. It sounded, it sounded great on the album, but you have to keep it in tune. You have to know how to play it. Uh, the ergonomics got to be right for you. You know, Hendrix was left-handed. There's a lot of things that are going on that have to be correct for you. And so, and learning 100, you know, 99% of this game, right, is learning how to do what you're doing. This much is the equipment, okay? Now it has to be sound equipment, it can't be broke, but that's the big deal. So you have to learn how to manage your equipment. You have to be a marksman, you have to be a shooter, number one. And then if you wanna do long range, you have to be a little bit of a scientist in terms of learning the base uh, level science and the rest is built upon that and it's relatively straightforward after that point. Okay guys, the giant, huge, biggest, worst <laughs> misconception in long range shooting in my opinion is guys just sending rounds shooting way too fast not thinking about what they're doing thinking that a round count is going to improve their game okay that's not how this deal works um if you're planning for a first round miss and maybe your second or third round hit 
Congratulations, you know how to spin the dials. Uh, you are now the world's slowest machine gunner, okay? <laughs> One of my favorite mentors, uh, Mr. Eduardo Fontcuberta, and I were talking about this topic and uh, you know the discipline of slowing the heck down to understanding what you're doing before you just start pulling the trigger a lot. Uh, you'll eventually hit the target, but he made a real hilarious uh, comment saying, hey, congratulations, you're a very slow machine gunner. <laughs> you walked him in there eventually. That's not precision shooting. That's a whole different deal, okay? Now, it's still fun. I'm not saying it's not fun to just launch 800 rounds at a target until you hit it, okay? But uh, the idea is to be you know, accurate and precise on that first shot. And in order to do that, that's a whole nother level of understanding and discipline and a whole nother level of peripheral awareness of what's going around you, slowing down, making sure every input is perfect, studying the wind before you shoot, making darn sure that everything's squared away ahead of time, you make that shot and then you're good. One of my mentors from way back, uh, used to teach me in a certain way. He said, all right, you get one round. The rest of the ammunition is at the bottom of the mountain, not all the way up the mountain, but like several hundred yards downhill, right? In the truck. You take one round at a time up to the FFP and you make that shot. And if you miss, then you gotta walk all the way back down, come back up, figure out what you did wrong and shoot again. Uh, you very quickly start to slow down and think what you're doing. So there's a lot of drills like that that can slow you down. Uh, people slop their way through it way too much. And because you can hit it on the second, the third, the fourth, or the fifth time, it's not making you really a, a long-range precision shooter. It's making you a very, very slow machine gutter, okay? And so that's, I think, the biggest mistake people make is just trying to build up a giant pile of brass next to them before they can hit the target, okay? Now, we've all done that from time to time, and it is fun, but it's not long-range precision shooting in my humble opinion. Okay guys, we hope you enjoyed that. Of course, if you wanna learn more about managing your system and all these different things we talked about, of course we talk about how to log your muzzle velocity variation in a very smart way. We talk about how to effectively zero your rifle. We uh, give you different options rather than being dogmatic on things with your firing position and learning how to shoot. There's different body types, there's different applications, guys. Uh, Rex Defense does not train in one particular application, although we do come at from generally a field perspective, a real world perspective. We're not gonna be dogmatic because we understand that everyone's got kind of a different idea in mind. We concentrate more on that base science, okay? That foundation that all the other little things are built on, okay? No matter what, if it's PRS, F-class, varmint shooting, long-range hunting, tactical, you know, whether it's SWAT or military, doesn't matter. Um, if you understand the science very well, the internal ballistics, how stuff works, then you will be equipped to excel at whatever style of shooting you want to do, okay? Um, if you guys want to learn more about how to uh, run your ballistic software, we can consult on that. There's 9,000 different variations that come out each month, but they're all kind of based on the same science again. So we go over the science, we don't get too much into the specifics of each piece of equipment, but we do want to help you wrestle that thing to the ground and figure out how it works. That's very important for you to understand whatever piece of equipment you have, how that thing works. And you don't want someone just to hand it to you, you wanna be able to wrestle through it yourself, that way you've mastered it, okay? Then you are the shooter and uh, not necessarily the machine or anybody else, okay? If you wanna learn more about ballistic modeling and, co and collecting sound dope, um, and getting all your variables correct and not missing out on certain things that might throw you off that you didn't realize even existed. If you want to talk about uh, different uh, sets of equipment that are available and all that other fun stuff and the whole procedure and the methodology and the strategy behind long range shooting, uh, check out rexdefense.com. And we have a course schedule. Uh, we're kind of all over the place and we'd love to hang out with you. We certainly have a lot of fun. Uh, we don't make fun of anybody at any level. There's guys that come in who are very, very top guys in the world, and there's guys that are brand new. They all come to the same class. Everyone has the same amount of fun. We all learn together. The smart guys learn from the new guys, and new, new guys learn from the smart guys. I learn from everybody. Hopefully, everybody learns something at the class, and we have a good time. So uh, we look forward to having you guys there, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side.
I've never taken a long-range class before, but I can't imagine anybody delivering this much information in this short of a period. Yeah, it takes a while. After you've uh, been around a while, you, you kind of accumulate most of this information. Some of it falls by the wayside. Some of it you retain. At least you know it's there, and if you need to use it, you can pull on it. You cannot miss an opportunity to gain knowledge. You cannot. The guys that are going to talk here, there must be 250 years of experience wandering around in the people that you're going to be exposed to. And I'm talking like hard-earned experience. Rex is, of course, an absolute natural. He showed us over the years that so... I, I wasn't surprised to see him perform beautifully because he was born for it. He, he is naturally an awesome presenter. So whether he does it through YouTube and video camera or live, and by the way, congratulations, this is uh, beyond the full house. I, I really think some people snuck up on you, man. You got to double check on who pay and who didn't because I see uh, more than 80 people here. I see north of uh, 100 people. If you have not been studying long range for quite some time, I'm not saying not to come to this class. I'm saying you better put your helmet on. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go fast. You can't get information like this going to happen in this class. You can't get that like, anywhere. He's already well known and he'll get better and better and better. <laughs> but, but you're right, we have, we have a very strong concentration of people with this much interest and passion you know, in, in this one room. Uh, everybody's here looking for the best and trying to be the best, and it's... I love it. And that's the secret to success, too, guys, is surrounding yourself with competent, intelligent, and passionate people. Yeah. Yeah. And you see that a lot in this room because everybody that gathers together here is because of a love for the sport or the craft and the skill and the art and the science. and you, Mr. Rex, you're kicking some butt up there today, man. You're in the zone. I'm getting sweatier and sweatier, Lou. Wait until four hours from now. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a little scared to get up there. I mean, Rex is such a great speaker in this forum, and I'm thinking, oh, man, I'm going to bore these guys to death. <laughs> but I can tell you one thing I like about these type of forums. When you get guys that admit to being interested in long-range shooting, you're past the guy who swears he can shoot a quarter-inch group with his factory uh, Savage with a factory ammo. So these guys, they're not at that point. They've gone past that. They're really serious now, and they really know a lot of this stuff. It's more about how much further can I, I push my where they've come with capabilities with more knowledge and more practice and more information. We're gonna, we'll have a good time. Uh, the students will have a good time. You're going to get a tremendous uh, level of information. And there are different levels of knowledge. And when I met Rex, he was really the first guy that I had met that had that kind of tier one level of knowledge. This won't be the last time that you guys do this. This is the best thing that we, I have seen or been associated with thus far in this this industry this is really good uh, I think that the guys have learned a lot about this on um, uh, relative to the topics and how to handle it at the next one that they do I expect that the next one will be better and better and better and I think that the guys that go to it are going to uh, benefit and learn a lot but you're going to see some amazing things. If, when this company, as he builds this company and this curriculum, and it goes, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be a bookmark in American Farms training history. There, like, something is different over there, what's going on, and people will come from all over. Hey folks, it's Lou McCoy with the Rex Reviews Project, and we are here in Texas. Holy crap, man. Yeah. This has been a lot of fun. I'm here with Jesse and his lovely wife. And what, what do you guys have to say after the second day? So we get out here. The first thing we did was check out all of our guns and equipment. We want that solid. Um, we we uh, learn the fundamentals, make sure that everybody is doing things like correctly and properly. And that way, when we don't, when we start shooting out the longer distances, we don't, uh, you know, we don't have to wonder what, what's all going on out there, you know. And um, I think that's, that's really cool because you feel a lot more confident knowing that you're, you, you're solid, you got a solid foundation um, when you start engaging things way out there. So 
and you I start think that's off, great. Yeah, man, and you start off really close, and you get all the bugs worked out, and then you work out farther, and it's no big deal. It's easy. Yeah. It's easy. So the system works, Mr. Rex. It works, my man. Just this experience was probably the best shooting experience I've ever had. It was the most I've ever learned, ever. So just getting to shoot out to 1,000, 1,100 yards, and these guys get you out there quick and do it the right way. But I think it's rolling down off the snow, right? Now what? Nah. That's still barely a two. Oh, yeah? It's hot air. Nothing. Yeah, reticle choice and design, I've really learned to, mm -hmm. like, that's really important. And, you know, we always focus on all the other stuff, mm -hmm. you know, but reticle design, you know, is very critical. Uh, if you pay attention to those classes and and watch those reviews, it'll all come together for you. And this is the place where it all comes together. Yeah, and you get out in the field and you get to apply all that knowledge and see it in action. And that's gratifying. Absolutely. And it's the real world uh, issues that uh, you have to, that you're really learning here, as opposed to just the, you know, you get all that technical data and then you bring it out here to the real world and you put it all together and it works. The secret Rex taught me about butterfly kisses on the cheek. And it's that actually was, that, true? It was true. Did it, it was, work? It totally worked. What? It totally was. It happened earlier today, and all day I've been just on. Uh, like I just said a minute ago, yesterday everybody showed up. They were nervous. They didn't yeah. know what to expect. And look at the crowd behind us now. It's like a party back there, man. People yeah. are just having the time of their lives and not only having a good time, but making some shots, too. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. impressive ones. They're learning what, what they come out here with. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, dot, the dot drills, a lot of the drills that Rex and, and uh, Paul are having us do, um, they really make you, you know, get you into shape and make you, you know, do exactly what you did the last time and be consecutive, you know. So I think that's, that's a, a just super way to start to, you know, start to do this stuff. So. Yeah, it is. And you lay that solid foundation and the rest is easy, man. Yeah, we're just now it's, it's not even really hard to shoot out there. We're shooting out at 1,100 yards. And... Uh, really not that big a deal now that we you know <laughs> now that we know what to do all right what just happened man i just hit right. a water bottle at 875 yards and you had it one shot one shot that's not bad so what's the secret man aim small miss small amen well done brother thank you as long as you pay attention and do what the instructors say it will all come together as an equation and the equal sign pops right up My name's edwin from boston Traveled out here to Pennsylvania to take the class to shoot past my home range of 600. Shot out to 1030, made some hits. Every time uh, Rex teaches you something new and gets you comfortable, he totally messes with you. Get you dirty, <laughs> get you muddy, makes you roll around in the rain and the mud and the dust. And then he takes your scope and he messes it all up and he just, he teaches us something new every time. So great time, good guys. Nice shooting there, Tex. Thanks man, second round hit on the gong and uh, first round hit on Fred. Um, thousand yard shot that was pretty awesome right. feels good for first left. stage of the day doesn't it yeah it does yeah it does i wasn't uh, shooting very no. good yesterday but yeah, it's good to come back right. haven't shot past 400 yards until i came to rx 18 um right off the bat brought us right out to a thousand yards gave us some confidence and after working the range tables i seen it i couldn't hit any target that i knew the true range to and had to dope for all the way out to and including thousand yards you're exposing you know all the different students including myself you know to some different techniques uh, pulling from different arenas uh, whether it be from some application of competition you know PRS NRL kind of things um, you, when we can't always take a prone shot you know shooting off of obstacles mm -hmm. from unstable positions I came to the IRX just to learn everything it's a great place to be great people Learned quite a bit. Uh, it got me dialed in at ranges I've never even looked at before. Um, I've been to RX 17001 seminar and 001 uh, shooting, and so I had some familiarity, um, but uh, this is just a lot better. This is what I really enjoy. Um, the instruction is, is, again, top notch. We learn any problems we have, we immediately have someone diagnose the problem. It's because it's so relaxed, the environment, um, you're constantly learning and you don't even really realize it. I think it's just been an awesome experience and, and the knowledge is 
Unbelievable. Hey, my name's Mitch. I just uh, over here at the uh, Rex Live Fire event. Learned a hell of a lot. Uh, I got my rifle zero for 100 yards yesterday, and within a few hours, I was hitting 1,030 yards. And I've never shot past 300 yards in my life. So it's definitely worth the money, definitely worth the trip, the hassle, everything about it's been great. Rex has been great, the crew's been great. Oh, this has been, this has been terrific. From my standpoint, we've seen things that we never expected to see. Let me see, we've got one guy, first time ever, at over a mile or whatever, and, and he's hitting 25, 80. I think everyone got to a mile, didn't they? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, everyone got yeah. to a mile in the whole class and, relatively uh, easily. It's, it's, it's really been surprising, and that just shows how the... Uh, <laughs> It shows how the equipment and it shows how the, uh, the shooters have progressed learning and, and with the instruction and all. These guys have had good instruction and they've just got the job done. And how far were you shooting? It was one mile. One mile and yeah. what were you using here? 300 wind mag. 300 wind, wind mag. mag. But probably not. Watch out, Rex. Rex. So you just hit the 2,500 yard. Like, oh, what's your solution? <laughs> 116 and a half MOA elevation and 14 MOA windage. And you had four shots. Yes, sir. You got in your team? We, I had six, so 10 total to hit 2551. So uh, tell me the story. How'd you finally spot where you're hitting? I saw the trace. I saw his trace and I called it good, but he was about six inches off the top right corner of the plate. He made a minor correction. Uh, bottom left edge of the plate, and I, I saw the top of the bullet, but I lost it, but it was an impact. 